In this video, we go through how to install a Rhinox HQX coupler to an excavator that has been pre-piped from factory. Continue watching to find out more. First, we've started by unboxing the coupler. On the smaller models, this needs to be removed from the box because we need to disassemble some parts to be able to fit the tail hoses into the two ports here. This is due to access issues. On the larger models, you could actually leave it on the bottom skid of the box and that way it's easier to assemble to the machine and you've got less handling risks. First thing we need to do is we need to remove the four bolts that hold the cylinder in place. This is so we can slide it back to get better access to the two hydraulic ports. Unfortunately to do this, we need to slacken off the two bosses at the top for access to these two countersunk screws here. We should be able to just remove the two front screws and we can actually slide the boss up out of the way. You can also use a ratchet as well to remove the countersunk screws. And we can just slide that up now and we get access to the screws at the top. For the screws that are holding the cylinder in, we'll use an impact gun. These may need breaking away with a ratchet beforehand as they are torqued as you can see by the torque marks, and also have Loctite to hold them in. We can now push the cylinder, spring and latch assembly back. This doesn't have to be moved back far, this just allows us to get access to the two ports. All of the fixings that have been removed use the same size Allen key. On this model, some of the larger models will differ. So we next will fit the tail hoses, these are fitted into place with a 8th BSP banjo fitting with a doughty seal at either side. Typically the right hand side of the coupler as you would look at it from the cab, so that's this side, this port would take the yellow fitting which then pipes into the machine circuit. And same for the other port as well, this is a blue marked hose. What we'll do is we'll just splay the hoses just slightly to the side, this is just so it clears the machine when it comes through and we'll tighten these with a 14 millimeter spanner. You could also use a ratchet spanner, just to make life a little bit easier. We'll then reassemble the cylinder. One thing we need to take note of is to make sure that the front deadlock is pushed forward. This is due to the activation fingers on the rear latch. The latch needs to be pushed around, so when we push the cylinder back up, it can actually activate the front lock. If, when it's reassembled, the latch is up like this, this is in the wrong orientation and it won't operate when assembled. So in reverse, before we'll put the four screws back in. It's important to start these off by hand before using an impact driver to avoid cross-threading the fixings. We'll use a torque wrench just to make sure that these are tightened to the preset load. We can now reinstall the fixings that hold the bosses in place. And we'll just finish these off with a ratchet. The coupler is now ready to go onto the machine. The next stage is to lower the bucket link down into the coupler. This will start the installation process. We'll fit one pin, tap that through with a copper hammer. We'll then just move the hoses out of the way and we'll pick the coupler up and fit it to the dipper. We'll now fit the pin from the other side and we can fit the retaining screws and we can tighten these up with an impact gun. Once the coupler is installed to the machine, we need to fit up the hydraulic hoses, but to do this, we're gonna to have to take off the blanking plugs on the coupler system. So what we should do is we will turn the excavator off and we'll just move all the levers the blade just to let the pressure out of the system so when we take the blanking plugs off we don't have fluid escaping at pressure. So depending on how the system is piped sometimes you have to remove the hoses on the side to be able to get access for a spanner or just slacken them off and move them around. In this instance we're going to have to take it all the way off. It would be worth just having a rag as well just to stop any fluid going all over. Carefully remove these points just in case there is any pressurised fluid still and we can then remove the blanking plugs. After we've taken one side off, this actually allows us to get access to both of the blanking plugs. This may differ on machines. We can then fit two straight couplings with a doughty washer. What we'll have to do though is tighten one up and then work to the next fitting 
again so we can get access. If we were to fit this one now, you can see we'll actually struggle for access to tighten this one. It's important to leave the protective caps on and covers until you actually come to fit in it to stave any debris getting into the system. One thing to note, if it's a full Rhinox fitting kit, all the items will be colour coded to ensure that the circuit's connected in the right orientation. We can now tighten this fitting and then we can fit the one at the opposite side. We can then refit the feed hose. That's the coupler now installed and ready for operation after doing some testing. So after installing the coupler, the first thing to do is to start the excavator and make sure that the latch doesn't open and retract. If so, this means the coupler has been piped the wrong way around. So we'll start the machine up and we will crowd the coupler in all the way around and make sure we get to maximum pressure. Now the latch has not opened. So as you can see from here, the latch is fully extended and it's not opened. If it was to open, as shown, if when starting the machine, this position is reached, that is because the coupler has been piped incorrectly. One other thing we'll check for is the clearance of the tail hoses. So this can be done ideally with two people, one operating the excavator and one watching out for any issues. But if done slowly, you can check the tail hoses to make sure they don't pinch, to make sure that they're long enough and there's enough flexibility in them. What we're looking for around here is to make sure that there's still some slack in them and they're not too tight and they're not pinching up and that there's clearance around here into the side of the coupler. For further information on servicing and maintenance of the Rhinox HQX coupler range, check out the video here. Or if you have any further questions on installation of a coupler to an excavator, don't hesitate to give us a call.